Hey everyone, I'm here with the DST edition of my mod guide. I just made one for single player, so if you're looking for my single player mods, go check that video out. For my DST mod guide, I'll be splitting it up into two parts. First, we'll discuss my client mods, and the second will be the server-sided mods. The first client mod that I use is of course Geometric Placement. Thankfully this mod exists in both single player and DST. You can use Geometric Placement to align plants, structures, and virtually anything else perfectly every single time. This makes it incredibly simple to make things neat and tidy. When holding a pitchfork, you'll have a white X in the center of each and every tile. You can use this to center anything you'd like in the center of that tile. Press caps lock in order to bring up the crafting menu, and use WASD to navigate through it. This way your mouse never moves and you're able to place your object in the center of the tile every single time. Pressing B in game will bring up a menu where you're able to manipulate your grid layout, shape, color, and size, among other things. I again use all of these settings at default with the exception that I always make my grid color red and green. Combined Status is also a mod that has made its way into DST. Just like its single player counterpart, I use this mod for the season clock aspect. I love having that visual representation of each and every season. This makes it convenient for me to know how close I am to the end of my current season and then I can plan accordingly. There are also a whole slew of customization options that we have with this mod. Through the mod configuration from the main menu, you're going to have access to a bunch of options that can control what is displayed while you play. This mod gives you a lot of choice and that's incredibly awesome. Next up is the Jester Wheel mod. Without this mod, if you wish to use an emote, you'll have to type slash and then the emote name right after. Using this mod allows you to hold G and see all of the emotes you have available. This will make emotes convenient to pull off rather than annoyingly have to stop and type every single time you wish to wave to a friend or start dancing. Through the configuration menu, you can change things like the wheel size, how the emotes are displayed, and a few other things. Smarter Crockpot is another one that I still enjoy using. Just like its single player counterpart, you'll be able to throw your food into the crockpot like normal, with the added option of hitting predict to see what you're going to make without having to waste food. If you're using items that have more than one potential outcome, you can hit predict a few times to see what recipes you may make instead. Next up are the server-sided mods. These are mods that are specifically enabled by the person hosting the server and are essentially forced upon any client who joins. This means everybody will be using the same mods so long as they're server-sided. Wormhole Marks is one of these server mods. By hopping through a wormhole you'll not only know where the other site is, but you'll have marked the wormhole with a particular color that is visible to both you and other players on the server. Now, nobody's going to be forgetting where a particular wormhole leads. Moving on to the item tooltips mod, this one packs quite a few features into one small package. D don't, don't laugh at that. You'll have the features of the display food values mod, which enables you to see what effects a particular food item will have on your hunger, health, and sanity. The detailed tooltips portion of this mod will show things such as weapon damage, tool durability, armor condition, reduction values, insulation, fire burn times, and so much more. This mod is really handy to have if you're new to the game or trying to teach things to a newer player. Continuing with the data display mods, we have the health info mod. This is again one that lends itself well to newer players or those just trying to figure things out, since it'll show you how much health an enemy has. You can use this to figure out what you'll be going up against, since not everyone has the enemy health pools memorized. Just hover your mouse over the enemy and you'll see what I'm talking about. No Thermal Stone Durability is another mod that I honestly enjoy. To each their own, obviously, but I do not enjoy the change from single player Thermal Stones having no durability to those in DST having durability. This will enable you to keep your Thermal Stones year round without having to worry about them breaking on you. It, it, it's, it's a rock. Don't leave me! My favorite DST specific mod has to be Global Positions. This mod gives you so many different features. You can hover over other players on the map and see their name, player indicators on the sides of your screen, signal fires that are shown on the map if you fill them with charcoal, pinging the map which allows you to place a marker that anyone in the world can see, and you can even share your map discovery with other people. You can also customize individual features that you don't like or need through the mods configuration menu. Customization is always nice. If you happen to be playing with a windy player, then DST Abigail Call is another really nice mod to have. I used to pretty much exclusively play Windy, and I despised how dumb Abigail could be. She would aggro to certain mobs and never stop fighting them until they were dead, or, more commonly, she was dead. With this mod, if you run away from the mob, Abigail is much more likely to follow you and stop unnecessary combat. Definitely a handy mod to have so you don't have to keep dealing with her dying unnecessarily. Last but not least, we have the Volk's Goat mod. 
Yep, it's a thing. This mod will rename all of your Volt Goats to Volks Goats, and very recently has renamed Volt Goat Horns to Volks Goat Horns. Mr. X has finally caved and renamed Electric Milk to Volks Goat Milk too. So be sure to go let him know how much you appreciate the Volks Milk. I'm sure it'll make him happy. I certainly hope those of you who are always asking me what DST mods I use found this video to your liking. As always, I'll be including a link in the description to each and every mod that I use. These will all of course be found on the Steam Workshop. If you guys enjoyed the video, please feel free to hit that like button so I know. Leave some feedback letting me know what future tutorial videos you want to see. I'm always using your guys' input to create these videos. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time.